Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'd like to talk about GIMP and Photoshop and compare some of the similarities and the differences between them uh, to help give you a better overview of image editing programs that are out there and which one of these two might be best for you. Keep in mind there are other options out there like Microsoft Paint, um, which is very simplistic built into Windows, uh, Paint.net, which is a little bit more complicated, uh, and some lesser known products as well that get closer to the level of GIMP and Photoshop. So uh, Photoshop, and that we're specifically talking about the CC, that's Creative Cloud 2017 version, the newest one, um, is definitely the most well respected when it comes to industry work. If you're doing serious design, graphic design, photo editing, uh, most people will talk about Photoshop when they're talking about serious applications you use for that kind of thing. Um, and then GIMP is kind of like the free version of that. So GNU Image Manipulator, uh, Image Manipulation Program, sorry, that's what GIMP stands for. Um, and this is kind of a, a community project, so they don't charge you anything, but they do take donations as they continue to develop the feature set. And uh, I, I would say it's pretty obvious that what they're kind of going for in GIMP is something like a free version of what you have in Photoshop. So they're both very, very solid tools. You have the ability to manage layers in both of them. And if you don't know what layers are, um, it's the ability to take the edits you make to an image or a graphic and uh, put each of your changes on different layers. You can combine some of your changes on the same layer so that at any point in time, you can remove a layer to remove those changes. Uh, or you can turn them invisible or visible as you need to. Um, so some of your changes might just be for temporary help and some might be permanent or you might want different variations of an image. But uh, most importantly, it helps to prevent you from making destructive changes to your graphics um, w without basically having to permanently commit to anything until you're ready. So it's very useful and any uh, image editor today should have that, to be honest. Um, beyond that, you have a lot of different tools in both of the apps. They have a lot of things going on. You can see the filter menu, the ability to add in things like blurs, uh, distorting your image, making it pixelated, all that other kind of thing uh, inside of Photoshop. But likewise, in GIMP, they've created very, very similar tools, uh, create uh, noise in your document, uh, decor for things like adding uh, bevel or border to your document. Um, and then of course under lights and shadows, drop shadow. You can even see that in the uh, in, in the text for the thumbnail that's gonna be for this video. There is actually drop shadow uh, behind uh, basically all of this text you see on screen. And I, I really think drop shadow helps to make it look a little. So. For the most part, you got a lot of the same functionality in both of them. I would say on the whole, and you can easily see this by looking at the window menu, uh, Photoshop does have more stuff, but most of this extra stuff that um, you have available to you in Photoshop that you don't have available to you in GIMP are only going to be tools that basically the most advanced users are really going to need. Uh, I mean, personally, I haven't even, even touched on things like glyphs or modifier keys. Um, I'm sure they're useful for someone out there, but uh, for most common graphical work, uh, totally unnecessary. It's just that Photoshop has those uh, features for the, you know, serious professionals. Uh, disclaimer, I'm not really a graphic designer, uh, <laughs> but I do use Photoshop and GIMP quite a bit. So just so you know there. Um, okay, so let me bring up some of the differences. Uh, well, we can talk about the obvious ones. Okay, so first off, Photoshop is this industry standard. So if you're talking to anybody about um, basically doing serious graphic design, they're going to be talking about, oh, maybe you can send me over the Photoshop document. No one's ever going to really say, oh, I want that GIMP XCF file, which is the format GIMP saves its... Uh, files with all of the layers and stuff so you can open it back up later and edit it. Uh, but people usually expect to see like a Photoshop document, right? Um, so for the sake of uh, kind of using software that everybody else is familiar with and expects, that's definitely an advantage to Photoshop. You'd have to probably convert some of your GIMP files if you wanted to use it professionally um, or kind of explain, I, I guess, 
why are you using GIMP? Um, now, for those who know GIMP, GIMP's fine. Like, there's no problem with it at all. You can definitely do really good quality work in it. Um, it's just that it's not what people expect you to use. And that's what I mean when I'm talking about industry standard. Uh, so, of course, uh, GIMP is free. And another advantage to GIMP is that it's actually supported on Linux. So Photoshop, um, at least in its public support, is only Mac and Windows. Um, now, for most people, that's fine. Most people use Windows, and I think beyond that, Mac's number two. But then there are geeks out there who like to use Linux. And if you're on Linux, then obviously GIMP is the way you're going to want to go. Or if you're cross-platform where you use some Windows and some GIMP, maybe you want to use one that you can uh, kind of be familiar with on both platforms rather than using a different tool for each platform. So that's that's a cool thing about GIMP, of course. Um, so, oh, okay, yeah, and this is kind of a big one. But uh, if you go check out like graphic design stores or plugins and that kind of thing. And, and you might be checking something like the Invado market. Uh, the support for Photoshop, because it's a premium product and it's kind of better well-known and people typically are more willing to shell out money for it because they're professionals. Uh, the amount of brushes and plugins that have been developed for Photoshop as opposed to GIMP are way higher. Uh, now, specifically with brushes, I'm sure there's a way to actually include them in GIMP. Uh, but in general, uh, community support for Photoshop when it comes to bringing in third-party projects into Photoshop, uh, maybe uh, design templates, much more likely to be in Photoshop document format than GIMP XCFs. Now, uh, you can open up Photoshop documents inside of GIMP, but I'm pretty sure you can't export as it. I, I did go ahead and search that beforehand, by the way. Um, so yeah, if you want things to be most compatible, and to not run into any issues and to have plugins that basically anything that you would hope Photoshop does, then maybe it doesn't. Probably a plugin out there somewhere, uh, developed by someone somewhere, does exist. Uh, now, there are plugins in GIMP, which is nice, but the amount of community support for it is not really that impressive. Um, like, I've tried out a few of the plugins, and they're usually not particularly good, and they're free, so, I mean, what do you expect? Um, but kind of with GIMP, it's much more what you see is what you get. Now, plenty of color tools, plenty of filters, um, plenty of dockable dialogues, basically windows that you can open up to add a lot of other things in, like uh, patterns or gradients. Uh, by the way, the patterns in GIMP, I would say that's kind of a weak point. They're not very impressive. You can see them over here. Uh, Pretty basic, and you'd probably want to search online for better ones. Um, but the, the tools overall in GIMP are fine. It's going to get you going for pretty much 99% of what you need. It's just if you need that 1%, and there might be a plugin out there for Photoshop where there might not be one. That's kind of the main thing I'm trying to get out there. Um, yeah. So beyond that, uh, the very similar tools, you can't really go wrong with either one. But uh, if you do want to have like that air of prestige where uh, you're kind of using the tool that people expect and uh, they might have the most community support being able to go look up almost any issue on a forum because there's tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of other people who are dealing with those same issues, uh, then Photoshop is the safest bet for professional uh, work, I would say. But uh, in terms of basically everybody else who just needs something that works well, I uh, can do layers, um, being able to create thumbnails in, in GIMP, you can do that just as easily, more or less, as you can do Photoshop, uh, or just basic image editing, or, you know, even a little bit beyond that. You can still do things like uh, pen tools, creating paths, uh, filling things with the bucket or gradient, all that other kind of crap. Then GIMP's going to serve you just fine. So uh, the price for Photoshop CC 2017, and I think the outcome is one package, is uh, I think it was something like $20 a month. Uh, and GIMP's free, but they do rely on community support. So it's kind of up to you. What price point do you like? Do you like shelling out the money for Photoshop and getting the best tool out there on the market? Or do you want the kind of... Um, Project, the like kind of fan-made project made by uh, these developers, which I, I don't really think they're getting paid or anything like that. Um, but they're definitely doing a good job here with GIMP. 
you can go for either one. It's really up to you. I don't want to ramble on too much longer, but hopefully this video has given you a good comparison between the different features and GIMP and Photoshop and why you might want to use one over the other. I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I will see you all in my future video content.